Yeah, yeah you can tell them to follow you. Hey, I'm Allie, and welcome to the Real Estate Happy Hour. Follow me at Allie.Chenault on Instagram. No. Woo! Yeah. Yes. <laughs> hey, if anybody knows uh, Ben Chenault, official. That we know official. that she didn't get her good looks oh, we don't from have him. Our, we don't have our, our, our microphones on, but that's awesome. No, we're good. We're good. We're they good. can hear us. Um, Thank you, Allie. Allie, you're awesome. That was awesome. We know that your Thank good you, looks ben. came from your mama. You know that. <laughs> oh, Ben. Tough words. <laughs> i tell you. Well, welcome to the happy hour. Welcome. Hope everybody's doing well. Welcome in. Let David's going to uh, go over there. Melanie, how are you? Hope you're doing well. Everything going good, your neck of the woods, baseball's in getting in high gear for you. Uh, man, we got a lot to talk about today, don't we, David? Oh, yeah, we do. Listen, uh, I was out on the links today with uh, uh, a brick realty uh, golf tournament supporting Kid One and uh, had a lot of fun. Did you support the Kid One and golf? Were you, how did you do? Well, man, our team did really good. We had four Eagles. Now, we might have hey, blown, up, blown up the rest of the course, but... We did have four eagles, which was awesome. Four eagles, yeah. But hold on, you have fun. that's kind of like cheating though, because you have four uh, people playing. Yeah, and it's it's scramble, it's best ball. So I mean, it's not really cheating, but you are. It is. It is. Hey, not, Bubba, Bubba Mills, you know, one, one of the great real estate coaches in all of America, right there. He is there he on is. the happy hour. I mean, how Bubba, is Mills. Bubba Mills. I mean, one of the best. Welcome, the Bubba. legendary. Welcome, coaches in all the real estate industry. Good to see you, Bubba. Uh, hey. Uh, these folks, Kelly down in Florida, and everybody's going to laugh at me when I say we're real excited. We got a new airline coming to Birmingham. They just took off for the first time yesterday, uh, headed to Philly, but it is. I can't tell if you're excited or if you're going to. I don't rattle know. Them. Well, I am going to rattle. It's, it's a low cost carrier, it's Frontier Airlines. Big for Birmingham. We really only have only right now have what three or four carriers. So they're going to be flying out of Birmingham. They're going to be flying, but they're going to be flying on they've irregular got, schedules. They've only got a few. Locations are going to, or yeah, Denver, Orlando, and Philly. Okay, uh, it's gonna be let's see, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, round trip to Denver, and then Orlando Monday and Friday, which kind of surprises me given everybody goes to Disney so often from here. I, I, you know, it's uh, kind of surprising. Monday and Friday, kind of odd, but maybe it's like the long weekend they're working on, yeah, uh, and then Philly on Wednesday and Saturday, so you got to really prepare good, um. Uh, oh, they have Wow Air, man! Iceland, ninety nine dollars. Iceland, man, we're getting we're getting gypped. We get to go to Philly, and Bubba gets to go to Iceland. Iceland for ninety nine I mean, bucks. That is, oh, that'd be great. That is wow. But I hear Wow Air. You know, uh, a lot of they're. I think they're going all over the country. I guess Kelly Kinda Devlin like Fisher loves us. Hey, she's a good lady, real smart. She's put on wings and try to fly myself. Yeah, well, one of the problems is, I mean, look at the price of, of everything. I mean, including bags. Carry-on bags, 35 bucks. Uh, then again, the fare is good, but it's not all-inclusive. And then you got, uh, it only got, goes to Iceland. You got coffee Wilder. and a Rice Krispie Treat for 5 bucks. Yeah, Rice Krispie Treat for 5 bucks. Man. Not a bad, not a bad deal. If my daughter could get that out of her lunch bag, man, that little entrepreneur would be rich. Did you try it? Charging her five bucks for a Rice Krispie treat. That won't work because she would have taken my five dollars, put it in her piggy bank, and then pay me. You know, take your twenty and buy a whole bucket full. Yeah, kids, uh, y'all know this. The kids are just not real good at uh, buying their own inventory. <laughs> well, they don't need to. They no, they just take they from take you. ours. Yeah, yeah, and then sell it. I mean, no good stuff. Deal. But but anyway, thirty five dollars, and then uh, check bags are like what? What do they say? Uh, thirty dollars. Uh, if you even call into the call center, it's thirty-five dollars for one. So, anyway, Courtney's watching. Courtney, welcome in. We'll bring her on camera. Yeah, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Just Courtney, kidding. Courtney, how's the market today? The, the stock market. Uh, you killing it? I bet she is. She is one of the smartest. Oh, Michael people. Bruno's uh, Creole Cream Ale. Cheers! Abita. Hey, it's a happy hour. I forgot. Yep. Abita. There you go. And Michael knows where to get those. <sighs> Absolutely. So, so look, uh, we've we've got Frontier Airlines in there. Hey, Frontier's there. Um, man, uh, let me tell you. Uh, Courtney says good day. All right, listen, I saw a video. <laughs> sure okay, yesterday. Right. Yep. Was it yesterday? Yeah, shoot, yesterday. All right, there's a. Uh, it, I think it's National Real Estate Report, and these guys have been doing this for for years, and they update the market and things like that. Man, they they showed this video, some clips of Gary Keller. Okay, Keller he, Williams. 
smart visionary in our industry. Amazing. Okay. Yep. The guy has done. I'm a Remax guy, by the way. And I'm extremely well. Kelly, he's he's, he's done extremely well. Run a real estate company, um, Gary Keller. But this video shows him. I mean, just kind of irate at the whole world. He wants to burn the house down. Well, let's be clear on what house he's talking about. He's talking about the mortgage, insurance, um, property management, property management, anything associated with real estate sales. What the the message that he was trying to to relay was basically, I think it was some scare tactics for his agents listening, saying, hey, I'm going to take care of you by taking out everybody else. Yeah. And it was it was amazing. Um, I, I, we don't have the link. We could add it in here. It's National we'll, Real Estate Report. Yeah, we'll, we'll put it down below at the end. But he was talking about how uh, they're going to basically do away with the mortgage and how in the future... Real not estate, they. Let's talk about the industry in general. The industry in general is going to do away. And, and basically, it's going to be a... When you buy or sell a house, it's going to be a one, one price, uh, one transaction. You get your insurance, mortgage... Yeah, House, like you, like it's gift wrapped under the tree. Everything done. Right. You go. You, you literally go one stop shop. We have it all now. We've had similar things. Uh, we do have things right now where, let's say, a real estate broker also has a mortgage company. He also has an insurance company. But typically, they've run those as separate entities within the company with separate people and everything. And it sounds like what Gary Keller's proposing is to use the sales arm of his real estate agents to help sell everything else, correct? Yeah, it sounds like he, wa he wants to just completely do away with everything else and just have the real estate agent in there or just roll this all up into one uh, transaction and do away with these other third parties, which uh, to me, I, th I think is amazing. It we're seeing a lot of disruption. Let, let's start with the premise, though. We're seeing a lot of disruption in the real estate industry already, correct? I've never seen more than this year. Um, Disruption and uh, yeah, he went crazy on EXP. Yeah, did. I mean ESP is a disruptor that within real estate that is doing a phenomenal job, quite frankly, uh, in changing the brokerage model. Yeah, um, he loves to start the pot. He is brilliant. Uh, he, <laughs> that's the that's the scary part. He is opening a mortgage you know? company, um, and he's and he's doing some things with a zero plus mortgage where there is uh, no lender fees, there's no origination, plus a thousand dollars cash back. But let me tell you something. Where is that money coming from? It's it, it's got to come out of either compensation to the loan officer, which the majority of it will. So if the the compensation of the loan officer goes way down, where's the value and the quality going to go? Is it going to stay high? Well, that's a good There's question, no Bubba way. Mills. If you're still watching, Bubba Bubba has his pulse on. The, he really knows your industry fairly well from his days in the REO game. But Bubba, what do you think? Uh, where what is going to happen to that loan officer in that situation? Because he's right, Remax has motto more all those things. The difference is Gary's not afraid to throw it out there and sling it out there to really uh, mix it up. Whether he's right or he's wrong, he is at least getting in the game, uh, and it'll be interesting to see. He makes the money on hedging it on the market due to bulk. Yeah, yeah sure, 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 and, and that's, that's what everybody good. tries to do. And that's a great idea until it doesn't work. Everything's a great idea until it's not, right? Boy, sure, sure. Right. And so I, I just think that um, the quality is going to go down. The, the income for the loan officer is going to go down. It's just like Rocket Mortgage. Now, Rocket Mortgage thinks that they can have an 800 borrower with 20% down, W-2, uh, savings, one savings account, perfect, Thanks, beautiful loan, right? Beautiful loan file. Mm -hmm. Anybody could do that. Well, how many of those do you have? What about all the other people that actually need help, that need somebody? Okay. But well, there's so many of them. And, but that's where the importance of the agent will always be there and the importance of the loan officer. We talked about that on the phone yesterday, that the importance of any industry, that, that the, the one person that will always have a job in any industry is a salesperson, right? Because they're the one, you're going to have to sell an idea, a product, a service, always going to have that need. And the question is, are we answering the need of the service? Because what's happened is we're seeing a shift of how things are done. EXP's doing it with uh, the real estate brokerage model. Uh, and obviously, Gary Keller's trying to do it here, and it's going to be interesting. Well, I think it's amazing that the market is so ripe right now for sellers, right? It's so easy. Like, you could put your house on the market. Do you need a real estate agent? Maybe oh, not. Oh, yeah, until there's a problem. I mean, you've, yeah. you've, you've got buyers. You've got low inventory. So all these ideas spur out when the market is great and easy. 
When things are easy, everybody can do it. Well, right? and one, one thing, I, you know, if, if I had Gary Keller right before me, I would say, Gary, spread the message of telling your agents to keep their eye on the ball and within their own business. Because I think uh, that's more important to those individual agents. Most of them need to keep that eye on the ball, stay in their lane. They don't need to be deviating over here well, and over there. Yeah. And, and that's why I think when, when the market shifts and the market changes and then things get tough again, and then you need marketing, then you need staging, then you need relationships with other realtors. Right. Because when you have a listing or you have a house to sell, right, other real estate agents in your office help out, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's part of, part of my team. Uh, isn't, isn't that part of the game? I mean, absolutely. When, when those things come back into play more, real estate agents are going to be needed more. I mean, I just think this is just such a. It's just strange that and he's uh, not the only one. Let's, I, I want to be very clear. He's not the only one that's. He's, he's not. just the only one talking he's in not. that language. And, and, I, and I, I talked to somebody else in my office. There are mortgage comp big mortgage companies yep. out there trying to uh, control the lead and then introduce the real estate side. So, so there's uh, supposedly mortgage companies that are trying to take out the realtor. There are real estate companies trying to take out the mortgage. Well, one thing that does concern me that Gary Keller said in this speech, if you remember right, was that it's all about data, access to the data and what we can do with that data. I would caution everyone to be very careful because just look what happened to Facebook. If you don't handle data correctly and it gets in the wrong hands, and sometimes in the case of even Facebook, it was reverse uh, what do they call that? They, they they were able to get to it in reverse or whatever, data mining uh, for that. And it bit them in the butt. I mean, cost millions and millions of dollars in, in stock value and really uh, yeah. their trust value. And that's one thing I think agents, mortgage folks can't afford to miss out on, which is uh, we don't want to lose the trust of the people. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how it affects uh uh, our industry, but also the consumer. Yeah, and I've never, I've never seen um, more talk about such major change in the business. And it's, I mean, this is April, two thousand eighteen, and it's, it's been since January one. Rates started climbing up, and then all of this talk has come out of the woodwork. Yeah, he's right. Bubba Mills is right. BS. He says it, data is an excuse, not the solution. Right. And I and I can understand when you're marketing certain products to people and you want data. It's like you want to know that I am uh, forty something years old and I have a certain income and I probably have pets and how many kids? Like you know all that stuff about me, and you could market things that I would get online and buy. Yeah. yeah. But I'm I'm not going to buy a house online, and I guess that's the way that's where they want it to go. Oh, they want to control, listen, and they're all not going to be able to control everything because we're hearing the same thing out of Zillow. All these venture capital groups that are, I mean, uh, Fidelity Title, you got all these people that are getting the game. They're going after, I mean, one of the one of the things that I, you know, I heard from Regions Bank, a big bank uh, here in uh, the Southeast, you know, they're seeing themselves now as a technology company. You know, he said, Gary wants a monopoly. I, I got to go, guys. Love you guys for being a real... Uh, for being real, keep kicking butt. Be honest. Thanks, uh, Bubba. We appreciate Thank you, Bubba. you. You're one of the greats. Um, I mean, he might. He might. But Regions. Enough. Let me go back to Regions though, real quick. Regions is is saying we're a technology company that happens to do banking. That's a shift, isn't it? It's a mind shift because guess why they're thinking that is because we're playing on our handheld devices. We're paying with devices. We're we're, we're not interacting. I mean, they're talking about, not at regions necessarily, but talking about doing away the ATM card, right? Because it's almost obsolete. Your your 15-year-old probably won't use cash very often yeah. when they when they grow and up. And you've got to get into this game, and you've got to learn how it's being played, and you've got to learn the angles and, and what's best and what people like and, and, and all that. But I still think that real estate is, is a, a people business. You're, well, you're right. And I tell you, one of the things, I tell you, we're going to shift to another topic, and... Uh, you know, one thing, I, I was reading Consumer Reports. You know, I love Consumer Reports. Let me find it here. And this is just a little something here. I always like to look. They, every month they have, what are the best things to buy this month? And with your, uh, you know, since uh, you're on a home, you're, you know, your uh, lady uh, puts you on a budget. Here's the things that you're allowed to buy this month that are a good time to buy in May. Exterior paint and wood stains. Blenders. Definitely need a project for Blenders. That. You love blenders because you love cold drinks and then also outdoor speakers uh because the old models huh. the old models are 
going on out, new ones coming in, but I mean, golly. The well, smart we, speakers. Yes, the smart speakers. Yeah. Uh, that's what they call you, and Scott Stearns is here, by the way. Uh, Scott. Oh, yeah, Scott Stearns checking in. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey. Also, by the way, I, I do have something for you. I was riding around today and saw saw campaign signs for coroner. You know the person that like uh, sees you, like if you die, like they test you out and see what was wrong with you. Yeah. But like literally, honest Is to that God, an elected office. Yeah, but they have it like Republican and Democrat. I mean, I'm just saying. I didn't know this was a partisan issue. I need somebody just to do it well. I mean, who knew? I mean. <laughs> I mean, do I care? I mean, they do. They, they bring the dead bodies in, right? Yeah. I, I just want to know how it died. I'm just saying, hey, I didn't know it was Republican yeah, we Democrat. Don't, we don't have to take an angle on death. I mean, geez, Louise. Right? And speaking of death, another big D that all the country singers sing about is... Hello, divorce. Divorce. Yes. Big country singers sing about the divorce. Absolutely. Big deal for us. I mean, the stats are still out there. Over yeah, 50% big. of marriages in yeah, divorce. Yeah, now I think that... Uh, is it coming down? Sometimes I hear that that stat is uh, skewed, but I'm I'm not sure. Um, sometimes I can, I I can tell you. Sometimes I hear it's closer to 30, 35, but I know... <laughs> well, oh, well then. I mean, it's, Only a it's third. still not good. But we're talking about what happens in, that in situation. a divorce with yeah. real estate. Yep. Now, a lot of times, you know, the lawyers, the lawyers will get involved yep. and decide, the parties will decide who's going to keep the house. Uh, sometimes one or the other has to refinance it, or maybe both have to sell and move on. Um, so there's a lot of different situations. Things uh, can happen. Yeah. So a lot of times we'll see a refinance where the both parties are on the loan. Okay. Well, you're talking about there. Let's, let's, let's backtrack just a hair. Most of the time what happens, or a lot of the time, when somebody gets divorced, the court, via an agreement between the parties, will order one party to uh, take over. Yeah, so one party's going to stay in, in the house. And so but they also say what? They have, to, they have to relieve the other spouse because right. they are obligated on the mortgage. And they can't. And one of the big things is you can't just unilaterally do that because the mortgage, remember, is a separate contract between a lender and two borrowers. And the court, the divorce judge, cannot interfere with that relationship. Right. So they have to go back to the bank and either and refinance it into that person's name that's staying in the house. What's the problem? So the problem there could be what's the income? That's okay, right. What's the income of the party staying in the house? Are they able to qualify for the loan, qualify for the refinance yeah, that begs a question on their own? From me to you, which is... Oftentimes, the spout, the wife is the one that is going to keep, not maybe it's joint custody, but she's going to stay in the house for the kid's sake. Uh, what is the situation there? Because oftentimes they are, and, and I'm not passing judgment of their stay-at-home moms, but they haven't had much income, and that needs to happen. That's where we see a problem, correct? It is. So in, in that case, I mean, some, sometimes the parties will know that, that you know there's going to be uh, income from the other spouse to, to the spouse that's staying in the house. And if that's enough income to qualify, then we could possibly refinance it into their name. Or if they have some other income. Uh, or if not, then they, they, the spouse that's leaving the house will have to continue to make the payments. Well, that's right. And, and I think one of the biggest things is, uh, you know, that I found, if you don't know, I was an attorney, but I'm happily retired, um, is making sure that you, if, I understand a lot of people that get divorced hate each other, Right. They don't like each other. Going At that it. time, they do, yeah. Correct. And what ends up happening, though, is that real estate is a little bit different than any other asset. You can fight over cash. You can fight over all these things. But one thing I can tell you is you need to get along rel relative to the real estate because you're either going to swim together or you're going to sink together. There's not an in-between real estate because real estate is what it is. You have one asset that, that can't be broken in two. Right, and so we need to have a cohesion there, and I think really being upfront with everybody involved, whether it be the real estate agent, the lawyer, uh, the uh, the lender, let them know your situation. Believe me, we've seen it all uh, in right. real estate. So we really, and we're not passing judgment. Yeah. Uh, and the, in order to put a game plan together, we need to know all the facts. Yeah, you need to know everything, and and, and you need to be close to the. Uh, Divorce settlement, the the final 
a divorce decree. Um, you, you know, there are, there are certain situations where we do uh, cash out refinance, where we pull cash out of the house to pay off the, the other spouse. Uh, so, so that's allowed in the guidelines. Uh, so there's a lot of different situations. And, and a, a lot of times, you know, you'll have homeowners that are, that are joint homeowners together. They get divorced. And then they're not sure. Obviously, it's not really the first thing you think about when you get divorced is whether or not you can buy a house and move on. Yeah, so, it's tough. So there is, there's a lot of things to look at in that situation to see if you can either move on and buy another house on your own or stay in the house that you're in. And one thing I, I, I will say is that while we have some of the we have some really great divorce attorneys in Birmingham. Remember, just because you're an attorney doesn't mean you know everything. I didn't really do too much family law, right? So I didn't get jump into their area, but I did a lot of real estate and tax. You need to make sure, because a lot of times they'll try to figure it out, these divorce attorneys. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't really truly understand the metrics of the mortgage, the real estate and all that. So make sure you're getting sound advice and, and double-checking what they're saying. Because, yes. you know, one thing is, too, a lot of folks ask, well, how can we do an even split out of the divorce? You know, or or let's say uh, that you were get, went, going through a divorce and you brought sixty percent of the money to the table when you first went in. She brought in forty, and you can you can really look because you had two separate bank accounts. You went in there. That's a rare situation that where we can really kind of tell who, proportional ownership, right? And sometimes that's a good way to split it. But nine times out of ten, that's not what happens. Yeah. Yeah, most of the times it's it's a lot tougher to figure out, and it's just going to be based on what you guys decide with the attorney, and then we have to kind of come in the back end and, and figure it out qualification wise. Absolutely, absolutely, and it, you know it's just one of those things. And you know the other thing too is I've seen some lately ask me, "Hey, can we just rent our house?" Now let me ask you a question: You don't like Susie or whoever it is, or you don't like Max or whoever the guy is. You don't want to get and in now the you're going into a business with them. That's yeah. what it is. You don't want to get in a rental agreement with them. No. You don't want to get in a... Well, I'm just saying you don't want to be landlords either together. Because no. you're about to be in business and having to Because you're going to have to share the decision-making on some yeah. things. Yeah. Then that's probably not advised. And they're going to hold the kids over your head because you want a new air conditioner? Yes. I mean, can a man get an air conditioner? Like, I mean, no. I mean, come on. All right, moving on. Uh, you, real interesting story uh, came out uh, this week talking about, you know, after the Facebook data breach, there was a talk. Well, because one thing is Facebook is giving you free stuff, right? They're letting you use all this free stuff, and they're collecting that data, and they're reselling it to advertisers. They're bundling it up for demographic-type reports and that kind of thing. Hey, Jeff. Uh, and what ends up happening was this, this company did a study to find out how much would you have to pay, would every Facebook user have to pay to replace the same income that they're getting from advertisers and then allow you to control complete privacy. Complete control, hmm. right? It's an it, interesting thing. And they, what the study found was $82 a year is what it would cost every, assuming no one backed out. I mean, uh, there's a lot of people that wouldn't pay. So right. that number's got to be higher. But so right now, it's $82. Per user a year. Yes, Washington Post uh, is the one that first reported it. And there's millions of users. Millions of users. Yeah, and so uh, it's just interesting to think, because I was thinking, you know, I started thinking early on, how much could that be? Hey, Mrs. Walters, hope you're doing well. Uh, the pride of Springville. She actually has one of the best wedding venues uh, out uh, in Raglan. Raglan. I said Springville. I meant Raglan. Uh, sorry about that. Don't tell Jason. Um, but uh, anyway, but yeah, eighty-two dollars a user. I mean, I thought it would be much higher, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, that, and that's for them to not have any ads. That's that through. you would have everything con complete control because you know you look at there's other services we do we pay for. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, DocuSign. We all a lot of us in real estate use DocuSign. They don't sell our data that they the people you're inputting their addresses because they have a profit model that's geared to subscription-based services. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of uh, realtors, for instance, that use a thing called AuthentiSign. Uh, and I do believe that some of them don't hold me to it. I do think a lot of folks... Uh, listen, if they give you... And I'm not going to say specifically AuthentiSign does this, but there are some that do. If it's free, 
They do you really think that they're just volunteer? Hey, have all this data. Have our service for free. It's crazy. Yeah, they're doing that for some reason. Yes, hopefully for money making. I, I, see, here's the thing. One thing I want to talk about though is I want Facebook to make a ton of money. I mean, that's what they're geared to do. That's all a company is there for: is to make money, right? So we shouldn't get on them for making money. It's yeah. what they. It's being a good steward of this data and protecting it. Yeah, and I think you, you know it's funny because uh, Facebook for a while struggled with uh, with their books and making money and justifying you know, stock share price and things like that. But as soon as they went mobile, as soon as they went mobile and, and figured out the advertising and uh, monetized people being on their phone and on Facebook, it, it's gone through the roof well, since then. I mean, it it is crazy. You know, there was a uh, one last thing we'll talk about. We're talking about social media. Was that you know CNBC had a report uh, just the other day talking about that it this is the head of consumer lending for Bank of America said that uh, that social media uh, posting of social media pictures is actually driving home ownership among millennials. Interesting concept. I mean, it, it, they, they, there's a fear according to the article. There's a fear of missing out. They don't yeah. want to not be like so and so down the street. So they're going to go get a house. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of like because it they the realtor, see their but... friend, they see their friend posting pictures, and then they're jealous, right? Right. That's I mean, the idea. one of the pictures they showed was this nice. Was it? Whoa, there we go. A, a young couple, you know, nice young couple, and they're they got their new house. Uh, if you're another young couple, why rent? Yeah, we have to have a house. I mean, so well, I mean, if they can buy a house, surely we could buy a house. I mean, right? he's unemployed, but uh, that doesn't you know. Matter. Eh. Yeah. You know, just take out two loans, right? Uh, but I think there hey, is... Hey, Christy. And obviously, I'm in the mortgage business, so I've got a lot of friends on Facebook that are realtors. I see a ton of real estate posts. I see a ton of houses newly on the market. I see a ton of uh, looking for this and looking for that, and this will be on the market in two days. And, and you know, the market's great right now That's for right. sellers. And, and, and buyers, you know, it's just it's just very busy. Yeah, you know, The real estate market is very hot right well, now. Well... We will end on that because wanted to, you know, make sure everybody is aware. This is the, we probably should have led with it, really. This is the craziest real estate market that I've seen in my career. And you have, I'm sure, because we've, it's very rare that we've seen such low supply, very high demand. We are in quadruple offer situations. Yes, yeah, several offers on every house. I mean, every that, house. And that goes back to the, the lead-in story where we talked about all of this this talk and speculation in the market and, and people trying to take people out and, uh, you know, this major change in our industry, I think because it's so hot right now that people are are jumping the gun on, well, we can do this, we can do that, because it's it's always going to be like this. Yeah. It's always going to be amazing. It's always going to be wonderful. What the Beatles say, all we need is love. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, so I mean, it is it is getting to be a little crazy. So if you're if you're dancing the market, here's what I am nervous about though: is that we're getting to a situation where we, because the lack of inventory, I mean, deep lack of inventory, is getting sellers to actually put their house in the market. Because I think we're really getting into a situation where folks are going to go, "You go first. You sell." Well, no, I don't want to sell because I can't go anywhere. No, you sell, and then the, everybody's going to be pointing at each other. You, you know, you pull the trigger first. Right, and so we may be in a Mexican yeah. standoff. And I think it is. I think it's a good problem to have. It's it's a lot better than than a stagnant market or 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 too many buyers or not enough. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, too many houses and not enough movement. Um, I mean, you got to be more creative. Let me say this: you got to be more creative with your offer that you're putting out there than I've seen in a long time. I mean, I had a client yesterday. It was a full price offer. There were three offers that go out there. You know, and I asked Agent this morning, I said, she said, Collier, there was really a $100 separate number. It really isn't a money thing. And so I thought, what in the world could it be? I mean, I know I'm not the prettiest face in the world, but I'm just the agent. Yeah. You don't worry about me. And uh, she said, you know what it was? My client was single. They had kids, and they felt sorry for the kids. Hmm. So my, 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 my client said, I can't just pop one out. So there you go. I mean, geez, there you go. Really. But I mean, I think this real estate market speaks to the resiliency of the consumer, though, because ten years ago we were about on the verge, verge of collapse, right? And now here we are. The, the whole the housing market is doing wonderful, and it's it is. And it's the the resiliency of the consumer that has made it through and and 
and we're buying houses and everything is is moving along very well. It is. And uh but so if you're if you look at and just make sure that you get your ducks in a row. And the other thing is if you're a couple, get together and make sure you agree because we're going to need to make quick decisions in this market. Yeah, and I think the I think the talking to a lender, getting pre-qualified, knowing what your cash to close and your monthly payment is, is a big first step. So you know going into it what you're looking at. And then once you write that offer, you can provide that letter that says, hey, I've already done this piece. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm well, ready to go. Oh, by the way, Amanda may be watching, and she keeps saying I never say hi to her. So, hey, Amanda. Hello, Amanda. Uh, that's my wife. Better late asking. than never. Yeah, yeah. We're we're nine episodes in, and I, hello. And at the end, but that's fine. I mean, hey Amanda, good to see you. Uh, and uh, anyway, so, so we'll be back next Thursday. Next Thursday we'll be here, and thanks to Ben's daughter uh, for leading us in. Yeah. Allie, uh, she is in a, a debate Great. right now, probably on the way home from, with her dad over who has more social media followers. Yes, he disagreed with her. Yeah, but we we finally rooked somebody from the office, even though she's. Uh, not technically working for the office. Yeah, she doesn't work if anybody's watching from the IRS, right? Finally, yeah, true. She is, hey, by the way, she is a lot better looking than Ben, though. Oh, yeah. She gets that from Kim. <laughs> so, from Kim. Anyway, we'll see you next Thursday at 4 o'clock at the happy hour. Thank you, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.